Greetings and salutations, I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and you're watching episode number 45 of I Create Content. Hey everyone, appreciate you tuning in to today's show. If you caught our last episode, we were taking a look at dodge and burn layers, non-destructive editing inside of Photoshop. Today, I've got a quick tip for you on exporting images from Adobe Lightroom. Let's go ahead and take a look. You can see on the screen in front of you, I've got several images. What I'm going to do is simply select all of them with a shift and select and go to the file menu and choose the export command. Here inside the export dialog box, I have the option to go to my hard drive to a CD or export out to different software. What I'm going to do is export to the hard drive. I can choose a default folder like my documents or pictures folder or be specific or if I'm writing a preset I can choose to pick that folder later. I'm going to go ahead and choose specific folder and I want you to see if I zoom in I always export to a folder called Lightroom exported photos. So for me I export images when I need to hand them off to somebody else. I don't really even care about keeping the exports. So I've got a specific folder called Lightroom Exported Folders, and what I'll do is make a subfolder for every single event that I export. If I need to clear space on the hard drive, I simply delete from the exported photos list. Now you might be saying, why would you do that? It's because it's so easy for me to export again if I really need another copy of the photos. So here I would go ahead and put this into a subfolder and I might name this a hey, today's event. So we could put here 2011, this is 09, this is today's the 26th, and we'll do the uh, webcast. A hey, podcast example. So that would be the folder. Now, when you export, you can keep the original file names, or if necessary, you could actually rename, do a custom name and sequence. So I could say this is the podcast and then it's going to be podcast hey, one through three. Then I can choose my file settings. So you have your option to do JPEG, a Photoshop document, a TIFF, you can do DNG, or the original file format, whatever was imported. So if it was imported as raw, it'd be dumped out as raw. Here you can set the quality. Remember, the higher the quality, the larger the file size. So if I was exporting this to the internet, I might choose a quality setting around 70 or 80 to make the file size smaller on the web. You can also choose your color space. sRGB is standard for monitor color, but it's also what a lot of the digital photo labs use, so I'm going to leave it as sRGB. If I scroll down, I have the ability to resize the image. Now I'm going to check this box. I'm going to change this for a second to width and height. I want you to understand if you're exporting for print, this is where you put the print size. I have lots of people who use the crop tool and think they're cropping to a specific size. Remember, in the develop module, you're cropping to an aspect ratio. It is here that you specify the image dimensions when you export. So again, if this were for the web, I'd leave it set up to pixels. I, I like to export by the long edge. So this means don't make the image any longer than a thousand pixels width or height. If it was in inches, I could say, hey, make it no taller or wider than six inches. If I wanted to do a four by six, if that was the aspect ratio. Right? You can also specify right, the resolution. So remember, the resolution needs to be matched with your output device. So 72 pixels per inch is fine for the screen. Then I go on and do my output sharpening. Now output sharpening is going to be like sharpening inside of Photoshop. So you have your choice of for the screen, for matte or glossy paper, and then the amount. You might choose a higher amount if you're going to print, because remember, ink on paper spreads. You can choose to export the metadata or knock it out if you don't want to include it, say you're posting to Flickr. It's also here that we can use the watermark option. So I could go and actually edit my watermarks. I'm just going to pull this up. This is the watermark editor. Now, I will refer you on screen right now. If you're on YouTube, there's a clickable link. 
you can go directly to the watermarking video to see how that works. So I'm not going to watermark this, I'll hit cancel, and then down at the bottom it says, okay, after it's exported, what do you want to do? I can choose to show these in Finder or Windows Explorer. I can open it up in any other app for processing, or if you've written Photoshop specific actions, you can have those run against the images after the export. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose to show in Finder. I'll hit the export command. You'll see here that it runs the export, takes but a second, and then here are the images as they appear on the hard drive. Okay. So that's how you export images inside of Lightroom. If the video helped you today, as always, give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate it when you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I answer the questions that you ask on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, here on the YouTube channel or my blog, ajwood.com. So you guys have an excellent afternoon, and I'll see you next time.